guys. Um, welcome. This is mod four of the community and cultural outreach uh, CADA trainings. Um, this one is going to be using common organizational tools. And for those of you maybe here or maybe at home that don't know me, my name is Chris Welch. I'm a technical assistant specialist here for CCO and um, I will be doing your presentation for you guys tonight. Um, first of all, I'd like to uh, do a few announcements with you guys. For one, we want to remind you guys about our conference that's coming up in May. It'll be May 30th and 31st here at NSU. You can register for that at our website, which is www.cherokee.org slash CCO. There's a form there for you to fill out, very easy. You just plug in your information, hit submit, and you're signed up automatically, okay? And there's one other thing we want to talk to you guys about tonight is we have a huge volunteer group that will be coming in. They will be staying in Welling, Oklahoma at Camp Robertson Church Camp. There's going to be 200 volunteers coming in for separate weeks. We need your help finding jobs. In the back back here where Mark and Donnie are sitting, I've got some uh, volunteer program brochures, the uh, job applications, and those sort of things. If you guys know any Cherokee Nation citizens within 30 miles of Tahlequah in this area that are one elderly, can be disabled, maybe they're a low-income family that needs some help with their home, this group can do lots of things, whether it be sheetrock, concrete. They re roofed four houses last year. This group is incredible. Last year alone, in two weeks, we're able to complete 43 major projects. 43 projects, it's just pretty amazing. These kids are made up of sixth through 12th graders. For every four of them, there's one skilled chaperone with them to showing them how to do this work. Great kids, it's a great opportunity for the communities, and we need your help finding jobs. So if you know of anybody, please grab an application, get mine or Tony's card that is back there, send it back to us, and we'll be happy to visit those folks, okay? That being said, I'd like to say a big thank you to Mark Parman, which most of you have met already. He's done a great job with these presentations, and also with Donnie Mackey, who is our cultural officer for being here tonight and working with us. So, big hand to them. All right, now you guys are stuck with me for the rest of the night, so. <coughs> Let's get going here, using common organizational tools. And I'm your host, Chris Welch. This is for our online viewers. If you're, if you're viewing this online tonight, or maybe you're watching this after it's archived, please follow this. At the end of this presentation, there will be a viewer assessment for you guys to fill out. Click on the link, go to it. Do you watch it? You'll be able, it's a short form. Just keep following the steps. The first page is just information, who you are, what organization you're with. Hit next, and once you go into that, it'll ask you a few questions, usually just two. So even if you're nodding in and out during this thing, you should be able to still answer them. You should be able to answer those questions, and once you submit it, that's the form that we need from you, if you're watching online, to get credit, you get your technical assistance hours, okay? Get credit for watching this presentation. Workshop ground rules. Most of you guys are really familiar with these. But all ideas are valid. Just because it's someone's opinion, that doesn't mean it's wrong because it's different from yours. Everyone has opinions, and if we didn't have opinions, we'd all be pretty boring, all of us being the same, right? We wouldn't have much to talk about. Key discussion points are documented. We'll talk about the key points as we go through the night. We'll listen 80% and talk 20%. We'll observe time frames. We'll seek common ground in action. So if there's any disputes about any ideas that we have in here tonight, we'll talk them out, okay? We'll make comments from an affirmative position rather than a negative way. We're gonna stay as positive as we can here tonight. We don't want any negative thoughts. And if there's any other things that you guys would like to set as a ground rule tonight, please just let us know right now. Is there any pet peeves, things that just bug you, people clicking pins, cell phones ringing, anything like that? All right, speak now, forever hold your peace, right? All right, we're moving on then. 
Where you're at tonight is your technology on level A. This is mod four. This is the end of the, find out, the foundational trainings right here. You guys have already been through the other three. This is mod four. You're ready to finish this so you guys can move on to building capacity. Most of you guys know this already, but this is your foundational level stuff. What we're working on your foundational level is basic knowledge and comprehension. You're just starting out as a board, you're just starting out as an organization, you need to know everything you can know. You need high level of support and guidance, which means you need folks like me, like Mark, like Donnie, like Mary back here, that can work with you guys and help you guys gather more knowledge, do things better, even if you're doing good, things can always be done better. And that's the kind of level that you need. And you, you get a working knowledge and increased comprehension as you go along with this level. This is also known as the foundational or sapling level of your organization. You're just now starting to butt out of the ground, you're just now starting to grow. This here just tells a little bit more about that. All right, guys, here we go. We're going to start using these common technology as organizational tools. How many here technology scares the death out of you? You got a few hands? Okay. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, it looks like mostly the baby boomers. If I'm not mistaken here. Hey. <laughs> Here's some of the objectives. These are some of the things we're going to learn tonight, guys. Explain how a community organization can use common technology like telephones, mail, fax, copiers, information systems. Explain how logs and forms can be useful in helping to <clears throat> convince funding providers to support your organization. That's evidence, right guys? Explain how simple machines and mechanisms can be used to, to increase organizations' communication. We'll also explain how photographs help tell your story why is it good to tell our story, guys? Who wants to know our story? The community. Who else wants to know our story? You guys. <laughs> Us guys, that's right. And then we'll also describe how the using organized file systems, well, they just help you be organized, right? All right. First off, what does technology even mean? Well, they're made up of two Greek words. And please correct me if I don't say these right. Techni, which is an art or a skill. And logia, which is systematic or practical study of. So it's basically the study of an art or skill. Technology means the systematic treatment of an art or a craft. Okay? It means having practical know-how. In my book, that's just called common sense, right? How do we use this stuff? What does it mean to use this stuff? Why do we even need to use it? It causes awareness of tasks to be done. Here's a common theme that I want you guys to repeat with me tonight. We want to work smarter, not harder. There's tools out there, just like if you were building something. I mean, you got to think a long time ago whenever they didn't have any, no, there was no hammers and they're beating nails in with stones a long time ago and they were building those pyramids and carrying the rocks, the boulders on their backs. it got to be an easier way to do this, right? Well, there's easier ways to do things within our organization too and there's some simple tools that are out there and we'll talk about those tonight to help you guys be more effective. Have to have the ability to use available resources in a creative and effective manner. Available resources. What does that even mean? What's an available resource? Gary, can you, can you tell me what an available resource is? Computer. computer, absolutely. It's a tool that's at your disposal. It's something that you have in hand that's available to you. How many of you guys believe that you are really good at talking to the community that you serve? Well, 
nobody with people skills in here, nobody that's a good seller, you could tell. <laughs> Some people don't show up, okay. One of the biggest things you can do to reach your community is a basic tool that we've all used before, your telephone. How hard is it to get out there? It's difficult work to get out there and walk the streets, knock on the doors, do everybody individually, right? It's very difficult work. It's tiring, it's time consuming. Absolutely, the, there's not enough pepper spray to go around. So the phone can be a great tool for you guys. Make community calls. Do those things that, that you can reach people in a, in a t more timely manner. You don't have to drive anywhere. You don't have gasoline costs. You don't have new shoe costs from having to walk all those miles. <laughs> Less trips to the doctor, no more dog bites. Right. <laughs> those sort of things. Um, what are the things that you can do is share news with people. Let them know what's going on. Let them know that Gary Bowen just, just retired and he's got more time to do things in the community now. Gary, what may happen is Gary may get called to mow a few more lawns, maybe. <laughs> it can be used to recruit volunteers. I know they are the lifeblood of, your organi of any organization or volunteers. They are the people that make things work. <clears throat> As a board member, you're a volunteer. You're volunteering your time and your service to the community and to that organization. It can also help you ask for opinions. Mark has talked to you guys before about needs assessments. That was MARD 1. Surveys, focus groups, all the things that help you gather the information you need to serve your community. How easy would it be to do a phone survey? Probably get a lot more answers out of it than you would somebody wanting to turn a piece of paper in, right? Exactly. And also fundraising. Get the word out about the events that you guys are having. <coughs> What's the use of doing all that fishing and having a fish fry if there's no one there to eat it and help, help raise the money, right? If there's no word of mouth out there, there's easier ways to do that than knocking on doors, guys. Phone calls make that a whole lot easier. Setting up a calling program. How many of you guys have a, a, phone, a calling program or even a phone tree? Anybody in this room? No? It's, a, it's maybe a good idea. If there's 200 people in your community and you have five board members, let's split them up. Okay, we, we have this many contact numbers. Gary, I want you to call this many. Newt, you call this many. Vicki Spangler, you call this many. And we can reach people that much faster. And it doesn't just have to be about your events, fundraisers. Think about emergency situations. It's tornado season, right? A lot of bad things are happening with our, with our weather. We need to have a calling tree, a calling system to get in touch with our community. Have a communications manager. Have someone that kind of overlooks this, that says, hey, we've, we've got a situation. We've got bad weather coming in. Let's start making some phone calls. Have someone in charge, someone that can pull, pull the string and get things done. And have regular, have regular reports on this. During your morning meetings, have someone that's whoever your, whoever your manager is over this or committee chair or whatever they're going to be called. Have them give a report each month. Let everybody know what's going on and how many people you guys are touching. Here's a program tip. Make a script. Write down what you're going to say. If you guys are like me, I know I'm only 33 and I shouldn't be forgetting things already, but I could call somebody and forget what I was saying halfway through it, right? Or leave that one important part out. I'm that guy that goes to Walmart for one thing and I come out with 15 and forget the one thing I went in there for. So. Keep that in mind. If you have it written down, it's that much easier to express. And as this says, the script is for focus and efficiency. You want to be as efficient as possible in this process. This makes things so much easier 
more fluent, and it kind of makes it sound like you know what you're talking about and what you're doing. It might make it seem like you're actually paying attention. You want to grow a calling program, and there's ways to do that. When you have an event, maybe, how many of you guys do sign-in sheets at your events? Do you guys ask for name, contact information, those sort of things? How easy it is to grow your column tree just from your sign-in sheets. This asks, say, if they put their phone number down, that means, hey, they, they, they want you to get in touch with them. That's how you grow those trees. That's how you make, it helps you collect names. And then it could even help you recruit callers, recruit volunteers, recruit people to help you in your mission. Information station. How many of you guys have a place or an office where everyone knows where they can find you, a centralized location? Anybody here? Like for CCO, you guys know we're at 5000 South Muskogee Avenue. You know where to find us. You know you can call us, come by, get the information that you need. Set up a place like that for your community, a place where they know set a set amount of hours where they can go between 9 and 2. They can stop by maybe the Brushy Community Building. Stop by, they know if you guys will have a bulletin board maybe with flyers and things and events that are going on or if they can sign up to be a member of the organization, they, they know where to go. Have that place for them. Create an information office for your organization. That's the most important thing you can do is to get your information out to the community. Without it, they have no idea what you guys are doing. They have no clue. And most importantly, it's a place where people can call to get that information. Make sure on everything you do, guys, put that, put your contact on there, your address, the phone number that they can reach you guys at. Get all that out there to them. Because, like I say, if they don't know what's going on, unless you tell them. A call-in system. I know it's kind of old school these days with the amount of technology that's come out. But does anybody still have an answering machine? Yes? Henry, I knew you would. <laughs> Answering machines can be a great benefit to an organization because you know you're not always going to be there. But what that allows you to do is collect people's information when you're not there. Ask them to leave a message, what, what information they're looking for, their contact info, and that will help you collect contact information. It will help you get your message out to folks that maybe you missed. And it's always good to make sure, even though maybe they were just calling to give you their contact, call them back. Let them know you received their information. Let them know that gives you an opportunity to talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. Gives you an opportunity to tell the mission and the story of the organization as well. And most of all, we learned this yesterday in a training we were at. Imagine the power of thank you. Just the power of thank you and acknowledgement goes so far. That is a gift in itself. You want to allow callers to decide when to call. You know, maybe they work from 9 to 5 and you're only there from 9 to 2. You're totally going to miss them. That allows them to leave a message for you guys to call them at a later date. Allows low manpower communication with community. Who has volunteer problems? Sometimes you guys feel like this is it. <laughs> That's what I thought. This will allow you guys to communicate with the community with low manpower, with just the volunteers that, that you have, that you know you can count on every day with that begging and pleading and say, I'll feed you if you just show up, please. <laughs> that stopped working after a while too, right? <laughs> but those are some of the things that, that, that will help that, your, your amount of manpower. And it also allows callers to record their messages. Keep that in mind. 
answering machines, as basic of a tool as it's been for years, still has a purpose today. I don't care how much things turn to digital, how many smartphones or tablets we have. It's oddly enough, an answering machine can go a long way for you guys. Now, Mark Parman keeps all of our records for us. Mark's title is he's our Evaluations and Outcomes Measurement Specialist. And we've gotten a few talking to's from Mark over phone logs. It happens. You know, you talk to somebody, maybe you get 10, 12 phone calls in a day and you get busy and you just forget to do those. But how important are those phone logs to write down those conversations that you're having with folks? For one, what's writing those down do? CYA. <laughs> it does that, CYA. Um, one of the biggest thing is it's going to create a lot of evidence for your organization. Once you write those down, you will know who you talk to, how long did you talk to them, what did you talk about? And that also gives you an opportunity to create evidence as you're going because you need that stuff for one annual reports, to report back to your board, and maybe people like us that maybe you were going to ask you for information like that whenever you write a grant or something like that. If you're already gathering the information, that's less work you have to do later. If you already have it, it's already done, then you've already done that part. Keeps, keeps the names and phone numbers of people who call. That will also add to your contact list. Listen to recorded messages and leave a message. Let's say, be, be sure if someone leaves you a message and you call them back and they're not there, leave them a message too. Maybe give them a different number. Maybe give them your cell phone if it's that. If you guys keep missing each other, give them another number that they can reach you at any time. Get to know them. Who knows, they, they may be your next relief for the next uh, cleanup day in the community. They may be your next relief in the next uh, Indian taco dinner. The thing, they may want to be one heck of a fry bread cook and can jump right in there and do it, and that's less sweat off your back, right? You never know who's going to be your next superstar. You never know. It may be a please and a thank you. This is all it's going to take to get them in. Keep the names and phone numbers of people who call and listen to the, to the recorded message and hang up. Is that what we need to do, guys? No. We don't. We don't want to just hang up and not call them back. They called you for a reason. So you need to call them back with the same urgency that they called you with. Like I said, phone logs create your evidence that your organization is connecting with the community. Because that's what we're here to do, right? As a community organization, we're here to serve the people. We, we got together because there was a need that we saw, a need that we wanted to get back and help people with. There's a need that we felt that we wanted to make that change in our communities, maybe in our children's lives, in our elders' lives, or just in the everyday blue-collar folks that make a community a community, right? It shows growth in community contacts. Once you build those lists, build that growth, like I said, once you do that, that builds your growth in the communities for people to, one, volunteer, get involved with what you guys are doing. Who knows, maybe that next ball game that you guys host out there on the softball field, that might be that, that one volunteer soft spot that they want to come work with the youth from now on. You never know what's going to change their mind to help you guys out. Make sure that the community is invited to provide feedback to the organization. How many of you guys' feedback's a little scary? It can be, right? Feedback can always be scary and it's something that you put your heart and soul into. Feedback is good and can be bad. And we kind of take bad the wrong way, right? But you need both sides. 
That's why they're opinions. That's why it's feedback. That's why you look for those things. Good can always be better. And in the form of quotable quotes from the community, this allows you, talking to the community in this way, allows them to tell you what they're thinking, what they think about the work you're doing. And also gives you great points. You know, when that big, deep voice comes on, whenever you're fixing to watch a movie preview, you know, what's it always say? USA Today says this is the greatest film of all time. Well, maybe this is the greatest fundraising event of all time. Get those quotes from people. Let them talk to you guys. You know, you're not really going to want to publicize that this was the worst event of all time, but pick through them. Find the good ones. You know, you go pick. It's, it's almost strawberry festival time, right? People go out and pick on those strawberries. You're not going to pick the rotten ones. You want to pick out the good ones, the big, red, juicy ones. That helps you get things that are going to promote your organization from the mouths of the people that you serve. And how much more meaningful is it coming from them than it is just coming from some Joe Blow that waltzed in the town one day that nobody knows? Why would you be, or who and why would you be interested in this evidence? What's, this, this, what's all this going to mean for you guys as an organization? What's this going to mean for your community if you gather this evidence and this information? It more, It will create more turnout. Anybody else? New, Vicki, what do you think? What else is this gathering this evidence going to make do for you guys? Yes, it'll improp you to make changes and make your organization more efficient. Exactly. And what happens when you get ready to write for that info? If you need that information for something. Grants, it can help you with your grants. It can help you, you guys, most of you are 501c3 organizations, right? If you're that, you're a public entity. You're a public organization. If someone comes in and say, hey, I would like to see who you guys have been talking to. Well, let me pull my phone log out and I'll show you right here. People can ask for that. They can ask for your financial records. They can ask for your, all of your documents are public. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. I'm going to talk about these right here. This is the end our portion on phones, and then we'll take a little we'll take a little short 10-minute break and we'll come back here. Smartphones. How many of you own a smartphone? We talked about the old school phones. Now we're going to talk about something that's a little bit different. Is anybody scared of their smartphone? A yes. little bit. They scared me too a little bit from what they know. What's something these smartphones or these tablets can help us do? Tablets can't help us do the first thing, but the smartphones can. We can still do the what phones were created for, right? We can call somebody. We can call somebody from it. From anywhere that we got a signal. We don't have to be sitting in our living room or the old phone sitting in the kitchen. No, we can be out back on the deck, join some of Mr. Bowen's barbecue and some iced tea and have a conversation. It also today will help us access our emails. So much of information has gone through the internet now into electronic mail or emails. These smartphones allow us to get it right there on our phone, right there. It also, we can access the internet from just about anywhere. As long as we have a signal, we can look something up for you real fast. Also, one of the biggest things now with smartphones is they have just as good of cameras on them as you can buy in stores. They take terrific pictures. Some camera, some of the cameras on these phones are actually have contracts with companies that make professional lenses and take, they have professional flashes on them and are really some of the best products you can buy. 
And you can pull your phone out right there and take the picture. Smartphones can be used for so, so much more, so much more than playing Angry Birds and Candy Crush and cruising around on Facebook, right? Now, speaking of social media, that is another great tool for your organizations. Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Tumblr, Instagram, all these things. People are on constantly, right? And incidentally, between the hours of 10 and 3, 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. is the highest number of times that people are on Facebook. You would think they should be working between that time, but I guess they're on social media. Those are your highest points. But just think about that. Let's say you guys were having your annual Easter egg event since we just passed with Easter for the youth. Maybe the population, maybe the, the attendance isn't all that great. Or maybe you have a great attendance and you want everyone to know about it. All you got to do is snap a picture, hit one button, and you've uploaded that dude to Facebook and everybody can see it. It's that fast these days. And that's what these smartphones can do for us. They can be used as a tool. And one other thing that these can allow us to do, we can use these for video chats. Is anyone in here actually done a video chat? All right, we got one back here, two, okay. They're not scary at all. It's just talking, but with, you actually have to look at somebody. You might actually have to make contact, eye contact with them. But it's, it's so cool that somebody can be, maybe they're in California, they're in San Francisco, California, and you're here in Tahlequah, Oklahoma, and you can still see each other face to face and have a conversation. There's different ones, there's different, there's different things out there. It seems to be the two biggest competitors are the Macs or the iPhones with the iOS systems. And then you have the Android systems, your two probably most popular. All kinds of applications you can download. There was, in our earlier session today, we had a lady who introduced us to an application called the CamScan. You can take any document in your hand, take a picture of it, converts it into a PDF, and you can email it to somebody right then. It's, um, it's both. It's on both. CamScan. Yeah, that's the name of it, is CamScan. Great tool. I didn't even know it existed, and I'm kind of a techie nerd myself. I didn't even know it was out there. So I, guys, I'm learning just the same way you guys are. There's so many things out there that can help us in these. And if you guys want to know more about this stuff, contact me or Kevin Stretch in our office. We'll be happy to come work with you guys on these items, okay? The other thing are tablets. You got your phones that are right here. Well, some people said, hey, these just aren't big enough. So they made really big cell phone sizes, and they call them tablets. It's easier to see, easier to read. Only thing that they can't really do is make phone calls, but there's applications for those too where you can actually do that through your phone, I mean through your tablet. So you can attach fancy little keyboards to them. And, you know, they, they, unlike some of the laptops these days, these do fit over your overhead compartment. You can put them in your back pocket, some of them. Very handy little item to take with you. It's basically a very small laptop that's half laptop, half computer, half iPhone, half whatever. The possibilities are endless. The point is don't be scared of it. Let it help you. Let it make things easier. And what, I, what, what have I said tonight? What's our theme for the night? We're going to work smarter, not harder. harder. That's right. All right, guys, if you guys want to take about a 10-minute uh, break, grab you something to drink. I think Mary's got some refreshments outside for you guys. Just remember, you can't bring them in here. Um, so if you'll take 10 minutes and come back, and we'll finish it out, and we'll talk to you about the, about the other organizational tools that are out there. Yes.
Oh, oh really? Yeah, people you hear that gear.
break. Um, if you guys are just joining us online, once again, my name is Chris Welch. I'm a technical assistant specialist for CCO. Um, we're going to finish up part two of our training tonight over organizational tools. Anybody still have one of these laying around? Yep. Digital camera. What's better about this than the old, I still like to play with these whenever I was a kid. Remember the old Polaroid, you take the picture, it automatically prints it out for you right there. I still kind of like those myself, honestly. But one thing digital cameras do, they, they will save you some money. Because you will be able, if you take pictures with a digital camera, you don't have to worry about buying film. You don't have to buy those disposable ones, you know. You take the picture and it feels like you rewind it for the next 30 seconds. You have to do that anymore. Digital cameras allow you to take, a lot of the times, depending on what kind of memory card that you have in there. Now, if you don't have a memory card in there, it's only going to let you take about five pictures. That's all it's going to hold. But you put you a nice high gig memory card in there, and you can take lots and lots of pictures. And the great thing is, if you have a computer, you can just download them right to that thing and print them yourself. OK? They're great. But why do we even want to take pictures? What is it that pictures do for us? It tells your story. We can write and tell people what we're doing all day long. But certain people are visual learners. They need to see it. And one thing pictures can do was the old saying, pictures are worth a thousand words. They can actually show what you have going on. If you have 100 people show it for an event, well, that's all good in theory. Show me. Show me that these people showed up. Show me who was there. It's nice that you say that Chief Baker was there, but I didn't see him. Show me that he was there. Show me he was outside playing marbles with the community. Show me the impact that you're having on your community. Show me if you're going to have a youth night, show me the impact and the smiles on the kids' faces. You can say we had 50 kids come watch a movie and eat popcorn, but did, did they enjoy it? I don't know. Show me that they enjoyed it. Take these pictures. Tell your story. Let people visualize what you're doing in your community. Show them the impact you're having. Images can do what? What's some other things we can use images for just instead of just gathering evidence? Does anybody in here have a brochure of your community organization? That can help you with there too. Pictures of events and programs that you guys have going on. Absolutely. Illustration for articles, and then once again, the evidence. The evidence of what you have going on, the evidence of the impact you're having on, on your community. And does anybody put together one of those dreaded annual reports? How much better are those annual reports that you do for your community when you can actually show them and just not tell them what you're doing? All right, photocopiers. If I had a dolly that would handle the photocopier in our office, we would just go ahead and roll it down a hill. But when they're working properly, guys, these are one of the greatest assets to one of your organizations, to an organization. Because what do you do whenever you get ready to do an event? You make a flyer, right, to tell everybody about it. You ever actually went down to Melmart or one of those places and actually paid to have all those copies made in color? Not real cheap, right? If you can have the money to spend and get you a good photocopier, that can save you some costs. You can mass produce any of the flyers or any of the paperwork, board meeting minutes, annual reports, any of those things that you want to pass out, you can produce them in mass quantities with one of these. Copiers are inexpensive printing presses. 
What can you do to advertise your organization with one of these? Well, you we'll make flyers. We can do newsletters. We can do all kinds of things that we need that you would create to make copies with. And there's easy ways to create these documents too. Most things on the internet, you can find templates for things. One of my favorites is if Bill Gates actually knew how much I was actually using it, he would probably cut me off. But I use Microsoft Windows templates all the time. They have templates to help you do flyers for events. They even have them with hamburgers and hot dogs on them already if you're going to do a cookout. You don't even have to do anything. They got it where you can make brochures. They've got forms and templates to make phone logs to do all these different applications that you guys do every day. And you know what the best part about them is? They are free, exactly. They cost you nothing. I mean, it's always better when it's free, right? That's, that's why you're always hoping the pizza delivery guy is about five minutes late so you get it for free. Because <laughs> what's better than free pizza? <laughs> Two free pizzas is better, I will admit that. But most of all, you want it to look good. You want the product that you're putting out there to look good. Because what happens when someone likes the way something looks? It makes them more interested in it. They're more likely to come to your event or be a part of what you've got going on if it looks good. Let's say there's a cherry red Mustang over here, and then you've got one that's just been primered gray. Which one do you think you're going to want to take home with you? I don't know about you guys, I'm taking the cherry red home with me. The better it looks, the more attention you're going to grab, and the more you can draw people into what you guys have going on. Fax machines. Everyone's favorite. Has anyone ever had the pleasure of using one of these? Just about everybody, right? They can be your best friend and your worst enemy at the same time. They are great tools. And as you can see, I've put a scene up from one of my favorite movies called Office Space. If you ever get a chance, watch it. These two poor guys had the worst time with this fax machine. It never worked. They, I don't even know what that error message means. Well, incidentally, they, they end up losing their job. And their buddy, who got promoted for doing nothing, by the way, he takes the fax machine as a going away present for them, takes them out in the field and gives them baseball bats, and he basically lets them take their frustrations out on this thing. Fax machines always aren't that bad. They can be frustrating, but they are a great tool because they can make an image, just like the copy machine does. They make an image for you. And they allow you to transport that image from one place to the next without without having to buy a stamp, which if they go up any higher, I don't think anybody's going to be sending any mail. Seems like every week they get up a little bit more. And you can get things there in a timely manner. They basically, they will take your image, transfer it through the phone lines, and it'll come out and be printed on another sheet of paper somewhere else. Very efficient, very time-saving. You don't have to drive and buy postage stamps or go to the to the post office or any of those things. You can send someone something to someone really fast. They're great time savers. And they will actually get the paper copy before you really even know that you've sent the thing. So it's a great tool, great to use. And I really say if you guys get a chance, watch that movie because it's really funny. All right, we're going to do our first stop and do for the night, guys. In your workbook packet, which that's not the, one, not the one with the slides, but the one that was just two pages, go into it. At the bottom, it's going to have a big open space, like a six by four. It looks like a postcard. All right, we are going to create a postcard, and it's going to be a little competition tonight. It's your annual meeting. In order to celebrate your annual meeting, you want to get the entire community there. You want to tell them what you've been doing. You want to celebrate all the successes you've had for the year. So you're going to do that. You guys just all went through a big fishing trip. You want to have a fish fry. We're going to fry fish, 
taters, we're going to have hush puppies, the whole nine yards. Well, there's about three or four other events going on. Create me a postcard that's going to grab my attention and it's going to tell me everything I need to know about your event and why I'm and make, draw me in to want to go to yours. I'm going to give you guys three minutes and I promise I won't judge anybody's drawings and I won't laugh at anyone because I have no right to because mine will be total, way worse than what you guys are doing. We have to put a picture on it. Mm -hmm. just, just as if you were making a flyer. You want to put it on a postcard? You want me to come to your event? Make it as, draw me in as best as you can. Okay, we're going to take three minutes. Oh, Go. It could yeah. be any event? It's going to be, an, it's going to be your annual meeting, oh, and you're going to have a fish fry. Oh, I'm going to Okay. You got a pen? Yeah. Thank get you. Hey, Mark, is there any more pins up there? All right, time's up. <laughs> All right. Who wants to go first? He wants to show me their fire. Okay. I was she... going to have to show everyone else. <laughs> well, you know this is streaming live, so. <laughs> All right. This is what we have. No. Dance away with $100. Come to Encore Performing Society annual meeting June 1st at 2 p.m. Tahlequah City Park. Door prize is a $100 gift card. She got several things right there. She did, she was able to tell me when it's gonna be, what time it's gonna be there. She gave me something to entice me to be there yeah. with the gift card, with the giveaway. But she didn't really tell me about what you're gonna be provided once you get there. She got almost everything in there, everything but the fish fry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who else? Who else? All right. Okay, this one says annual fish fry, May 10th all day. 
Illinois, at the Illinois River, lots of food, music, and swimming. First 50 people get a free meal. She lets you know if you're an early bird, you get to eat for free. <laughs> like I said, that might be even better than two free pizzas. <laughs> Did a good job. She she hit the points that we want to do. We All right. Get over with. TCO annual meeting, 6 p.m. Thursday, July 2nd, at the community building. Fish fry, free to all. Just not to the first 50. She's gonna feed everybody. Oh yeah. Those sand bass must have been biting that afternoon. <laughs> Everyone is welcome. Mill includes fish caught by local members, fried potatoes, beans, fried bread, and grape dumplings. Okay. She got me on the grape dumplings, guys. <laughs> she got me there. But the great thing is, you want to let them know all the information. You want it to pop out at them. You want to let them know exactly what's going on in as little words as possible. But you want to draw them in. You want to tell them. It's the CCO annual meeting. Come join us for a free fish fry, singing and dancing, and great communion with the community. Door prizes will be available. You want to let them know. Draw them in. Tell them why your, why your party, why your annual meeting is more important than any other event that's going on out there. One, everyone likes to eat for free. I mean, I, I earned this. I've found plenty of free meals in my time. That's always a great way to get people involved with what you guys are doing, <coughs> is bring them in with some food, let them know what you guys are doing, and once you, got them, once you got them trapped in there with their bellies full, then you can tell them about what you guys are doing. That's your time to talk to them, provide your evidence to them, and try to get them involved with what you guys are doing. It's a great event, but when you do your flyers, make sure, one, time, place, and the pertinent information that they need to know about what's going to be going on that day. And just like a good book or a good movie, how many of you guys want to watch a book that's, read a book that's boring at the front, or watch a movie that starts off so slow? You just want to turn it off or close the book, right? Jump at them. Get that phrase in there that's really going to catch their eye, draw them in to what you guys got going on. Okay? That's the key to putting out a good flyer, good postcard, and getting your message out there. <laughs> Digital images or projectors. How many of you guys remember the old projector that's up here? Okay. How many of you guys still have one at home? Be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Those always remind me of National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Chevy Chase falls through the ceiling because he's locked in the, he's locked in the attic and he finds the old reels, right? The great thing is that these still work just fine. It is a little bit hard to get those reels and get it on the, uh, on the 8 millimeter these days. <coughs> they have come up with newer, better, even HD some of them, projectors. And what do these projectors help us do? Anybody? Absolutely. It's a way for you to prove your evidence to a large crowd. These can project up to 84 inches on a wall <coughs> or a screen like we have here. Some can go even wider than that. It's big enough so everybody can see it. But another great thing you guys can do with these, how many of you guys do activities with the youth? Are these not great for movie night? These kids can be in a safe setting with people that care about them and enjoy themselves. They're a great tool. They're a great tool not only for programs and services, they're a great tool for you guys to, pro pro to provide evidence to the community and to those that matter. And as much of a tool as they were back whenever this first projector was made, there's just as important a tool today. Here's a little stop and do on that second page of your workbook pages. 
uh, which would be page 10, it says files. What, how many of you guys feel like that you're proficient in keeping files? Pretty good? Okay. What types of things do you guys keep on file? Everything? <coughs> Important papers, financial papers, minutes. Okay. Letters, okay. It does sound like you guys have a good, you guys have a good system there. You want to keep everything on file, whether it's a bill that you pay. Find that bill, you pay it, attach the receipt to it, file it away. Financial records. You guys have to report those to everybody anyway, right? Might as well keep up with them and keep them in a safe place. Meeting minutes, special meeting minutes. All those items. Keep them in a safe place. Keep them in a place that matters. And the most important thing, if you know how to use a tool and understand why it's used, you can often find another tool for the job. Okay? And you look at these files here. Files actually are your memories. And memories should be kept, right? These are snapshots of things that you have done, accomplished, money you spent, and tells you, because I don't know about you guys, I'm only 33 and this file cabinet up here gets pretty full sometimes. Well, not only that, you may not be there all the time. And Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, you guys know that you guys aren't going to be on the boards forever. Well, no, unless you guys have made it that way where you're there forever. <laughs> Which the IRS might kind of, might give you the old frowny face on that. Um, <sighs> by, I believe, by what we have been told, you're supposed to hold on to things for five years by the IRS regulations, especially financial records, you need to hold on five years at a time at that point. But it never hurts to go ahead after those five years, let's box it up, let's go put it in the storage building, because you never know. You never know. Or maybe scan and Absolutely. I, and I suggest to all of you guys, um, it's always good to have that that hard copy, but back yourself up electronically. There's different things that you guys can use. I mean, there's flash drives, there's external hard drives, all kinds of things you guys can do to scan your documents in and you can save them. And you've got a backup. Let's say there's a fire and things burn. Well, guess what? I still have my flash drive at home. I can still find everything and I can still get the meeting minutes out to everybody before the next meeting. It's great to pre prepare and plan for those sort of things. You want to, the information about the operations of the organization, that's one of your major keys. That's one of the major things you want to keep in those files, your day-to-day -day operations. You also want to keep financial information in there. Where's the money going? Because ideally, you know, that's what the IRS and most public people are most worried about. What money are you making and where's it going? Information about fundraising activities is also another good one to put in there because that's your money coming in a lot of the times. Like I say, Lowe's, Home Depot, all the nurseries, they've ran out of those uh, money trees. I've, I keep checking and they just don't ever get them back in stock. So we've got to do what we can through donations and fundraising to make our organizations work. And then information about the organization's interactions with the community. Our phone logs, our forms, our contact lists, all those things need to be filed away in a place where everyone can find them. A centralized location. Because when you come in, even though maybe you're not doing the phone log and you need to get in touch with a community member, it needs to be in a place where you can find it. Lynette's not going to want to come in to the Caney Community Center and not know where that log is if she needs to get in touch with someone. She, it'd be, it's great that she knows 
She's on the board where it's kept in the file cabinets, and she can call that person. Those are always great. Those are great policies to keep. And then everyone knows where those things are. And I know this isn't on here. I'm just going to throw this in here. If you guys have file cabinets, spend a little bit extra and get you one of those fireproof ones. These are important documents you're putting in here. They're heavier, they're stronger. These are things you want to protect. All right. Forms and reports. What do forms do? They help you track. They help you gather. We're not exactly hunters and gatherers anymore, right? We're not, we're not carrying bows and arrows around with us and out hunting game. But we are hunting something else. Evidence, information. This helps us gather all these things. And it writes it down so we don't forget. Because guess what, guys? We're human. We're human beings and we make mistakes and we forget things. It just happens. Happens more frequently the older I get. Uh, Whenever I get much older, I hate to, I may not be able to find my way to work. But these simple forms, name, address, phone number, email, this is a great opportunity if they're giving you this information that you guys can gather up short little surveys. What do you like about what our organization is doing? What don't you like? What would you like us to see us do? Would you like to see more focus for the youth or the, or the elderly in the community? Those, those type of things. These forms help you gather those things. And forms don't have to be just like this. They don't have to be paper. There's lots and lots of different forms out there. And one of my favorite companies is Google. And I'm proud to announce to you guys that at our conference, the Google team out of prior, prior, and they're also going to be sending a guy from New York City, will be at our conference. They're going to be teaching some sessions. And one of the things they're going to help you guys with is talk to you about their documents, their forms, and the different things that they have to make things easier on you guys. And this is my favorite, favorite thing about Google. Not only are they easy to use, they're easy to create. My third favorite thing about Google they are free. Google has tech support set, that are set aside to help you guys do your things. You guys can make electronic forms and just you can email them to people. All they got to do is type in their name, their phone number. You can ask them a couple of quick questions that all they got to do is click on them and submit it. And it automatically puts it all in a spreadsheet form. It automatically sends it to you. You don't have to do anything but read the results. There's different ways of collecting data. There's the old way through these forms and there's the new technology way and that's what we're here to work smarter, not harder. harder. That's right. Here's some advantage of doing forms. Your data can be collected quickly. Doing it the old way of the door knocking and face-to-face, -face, sit downs, it takes a while to do, right? It takes a while. You get the data that you need, but it takes a long time to do so. This way can help you guys gather in a more quickly, in a quicker manner. Data can be collected by people who have fairly basic experience or knowledge. They don't have to be the smartest cookie in the jar or even really understand how the forms work. All they need to be able to do is to know that they can collect that data, okay? Data collected on forms is easier to interpret and process. Some people are visual learners and they need to see that. Sometimes the phone call, they can't quite visualize it in their head. Sometimes they need that form to look at. And maybe you put a couple of options on there and gives them an, an, an option. Some of them like that. You know, it's a little bit harder for some to, to be free thinkers like, like we might be. They, they, they may need a right or a wrong, a yes or a no. You know, do we want, do we want to have a spaghetti dinner or Indian taco? They, 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 they want that option. That's what these forms can, can provide for those visual learners as well. 
And I can't say, our next slide here, I can't express the stress of this enough. Sign-in sheets. We have to gather that evidence. We have to have that physical evidence of a sign-in sheet. We have to have it to provide our evidence just at CCO. Like this event right now, what did we have you guys do as soon as you came in the door? You signed in us on a sign-in sheet. That helps us report back how many came, how many are watching us online. That lets us prove the need for, for the tools that we're presenting today. And it also helps us with finance prove why we needed to buy some water and some cookies tonight. So evidence is a great thing to have. These sign-in sheets, and I will kind of cover just for a second because a lot of you uh, work with our organization and do some reporting with us. You know, it's always a good idea. We ask you guys to do activity reports, and what do you guys need to turn in to us on those activity reports? Sign-in sheets of your events. That being said, it's always good to have those, but also when you do your financial reports to us, we ask you to put your in-kind contributions towards that project, which means people that volunteered their time towards that project, and we ask you to put a money value on that. Well, it's always a good job. If you're having a big event, have you a sign-in sheet for those that are participating. Also have you a sign-in sheet for the people in your organization that are volunteering. That keeps it separated, and you're gathering both amounts of information, and it'll help you gather the information, your evidence easier, and help you decipher it easier instead of going through, uh, I think this person was a volunteer, but I'm not for sure. You know, you keep them separated, and it's that much easier to keep up with. Okay? Signing sheets and guest books are good. One of the things that we usually always do, we ask you for your name, name of your organization, phone number, email, any of the contact information that you want to share. Because one, we figure if you're sharing it with us here, that it's okay to send you an email or a reminder of we're, 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 going, to have a, we're going to have a big event. We're going to do a next training. So we want you to know about that. So make these contact. This helps you call trees. As we go back to four, making phone calls. This is what helps you do your, your call trees. Helps you gather contact information for folks that you want to send flyers, postcards about your events to. And also builds evidence of the number of people that you've had an impact on as well. It'll help you to make a phone book of supporters and helpers, like we said. Let people know you're having an event. M make those call trees, make those phone calls. Maybe get some volunteers and some people, maybe people to help cook, do whatever you guys are, help with whatever you guys are doing. It also helps to collect comments from people who, have, who attend events and, and meetings. Okay, these sign-in sheets allow you to do those things as well. Both are evidence. The most important thing we're after, guys, evidence. We have to prove evidence. We have to gather the evidence up that we exist. And most importantly, we gather the evidence so we can show, we can show not only to ourselves, to the community or even grantees, people that, that we write to grants, or people that make the donations. We want to show them the impact we're having on our communities. Like I said before, we all got together for a reason, because we had a mission and a vision, because so we saw an issue or a problem in our communities, and we want to change that. And if we ever want to move forward, we got to gather this evidence up of uh, show people the, the hard work that we're doing, the impact we're having, so we can do even greater things. All right, guys, that is all I have for tonight. But I challenge you, and I, I will say in May, since we are having our conference at the end of May, we're going to postpone Mod 5 until June. It will be, the last, uh, be that last Tuesday of June. So really, we'll have 60 days. But think about this in 60 days, when you come back from Mod 5, Take something you learned tonight and put it to use in your organization. Whether it's getting the courage to finally get one of those smartphones and, or create a Facebook account or create phone logs, 
make that call tree. Whatever it may be, come back and tell me about it. Come back when we come back. Look at what's the first step you'll need to take this action and then what you did to put it into action, okay? Show me what you guys are able to do with this stuff. If you guys have any questions or comments, there's my email address, Chris Welch at churchcherokee.org, or my office line is 918-207-4953. Please give me a call if there's any questions that you guys might have. And if you guys need to download, maybe folks that are here or the folks that are watching online, if you would like to download this stuff, please follow the link here, www.cherokee.org slash cco. You'll see it'll say forms and documents and it'll say mod 4 and you can print, up, print those documents off. And don't forget online viewers, even if you're watching this as an archived event, please go back, finish your assessment so we can, guide, so we can give you credit for this, for this event, okay? We all know we're working with us that sometimes TA hours are required and we need you to fill those out so we can fulfill those TA requirements. I want to make those in, want a few more announcements. I want to announce that on June 21st in this room, we will be having a, one of, a part of our Saturday seminar series and this one will be over fundraising. We, the United Way of Tulsa is coming in and they're going to do a full Saturday training with us over fundraising. We will be doing a uh, working lunch that day out in the parking lot and we will have a, uh, it will be from nine to three. Just like always, come a little early. We'll have a little breakfast for everybody to eat and also lunch. But during, during the lunch time, we're actually going to be out here in the parking lot if, I'm hoping in June the weather's, the tornadoes have stopped by then. But what we're hoping to do is we're going to do an exhibit. We're going to ask some of the organizations that, that do things for fundraising to come show what they do. Whether it's maybe they make arts and crafts, maybe they make quilts, maybe they do, they sell barbecue, maybe they, uh, they like to do gospel singings or play music, those sort of things. And let everybody kind of get an idea of what other folks are doing. Maybe you can... Maybe you see something new that you'd like to try. But join us on June 21st from 9 to 3. We'd love to have you guys here. Once again, the United Way of Tulsa is going to be coming in to do this event for us. Okay? Another reminder, um, we are having cultural presentations as well. Those are on the second Tuesday each month at 6 p.m., 6 to 7. Join us for that. I believe the next one's going to be over anthropology. And uh, Wyman Kirk will be presenting that. What, what day? Um, it's the second Tuesday of each month. So, <laughs> May 13th, here we go. May 13th, and it'll be over Cherokee Anthropology by Wyman Kirk. Here? Yes, it'll be right here in this room. If you want to come here, we will also be streaming those live on the website and on the Cherokee Nation YouTube channel as well. And you guys will get technical assistance hours credit for those events. Okay? It'd be from six to seven. Uh-huh. It's gonna be anthropology. Yeah. And just a reminder guys, fill your evaluations out. But before you leave, Mark won't let anybody leave the room until you guys hand those in. That, that's how we grade ourselves, guys. If <laughs> That's how we grade ourselves. Um, just how like you, we ask you guys to do evaluations. We ask you guys for evaluations. That helps us get better. And if we don't get any better, guys, it's as good as it's going to get. So I want to thank you guys all for coming. And please have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know.